<laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to Stockwatch Sunday. My name is Brad, and this is Own the Chaos, where we talk about everything over the counter penny stocks. And you're in for a treat if this is the first time you're visiting my channel. First of all, I hope that you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because this is the largest channel dedicated specifically to over-the-counter pennies. And why is it that I love over-the-counter pennies? It's the volatility that I live for. I absolutely love it, I enjoyed it, and I see that there's a bidding war or a donation war going on already before I even go live, it's hilarious. That's why I was laughing. Um, uh, this is awesome, you guys are great, you guys are amazing. Um, so anyway, so if you guys are visiting for the first time, Again, I hope I earn your thumbs, thumbs ups and a sub subscription. If you're new to trading, uh, this could be a great opportunity to build a small account into a, a very large one. So a lot of folks within our community that have done so. And speaking of my community, it is called We Trade HQ. It's absolutely free for you to join. The links are down in the description below. I guarantee you, you will not find another community like it. We have over 4,000 members from around the globe learning and growing and celebrating each other's success. And it's not just dedicated to penny stocks or over-the-counter penny stocks. It is my website that me and my partner Jake have created. Uh, our vision is finally coming to life. It's not just dedicated to penny stocks. It's dedicated to anything that you're trading in the market. So if you're trading uh, big board stocks, futures, Forex, ETFs, options, even cryptocurrencies, no matter what you're trading in the market, we Trade HQ is the place for you. You'll be able to see my platform, my website in just a few minutes, but I want to welcome some folks in here already. You guys are amazing. Uh, for those of you who have been donating uh, before you went live, Alan and uh, Caleb, you guys are amazing. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. So what's going on, Alan, Caleb, um, and uh, Brett, Jacob, Andrew, Amy, Sheila, happy Easter uh, to those of you who are celebrating as, as well as uh, Passover. Uh, Yes, thank you, Sheila, for reminding me of that. Uh, <laughs> Arm Trader Surrenders. Uh, what's going on, Joker, Mark, uh, Dwayne, uh, Austin, uh, John, uh, and Thomas? Uh, good to see all of you guys here. So I got five uh, OTC penny stocks that I am watching this week. And if you've never been a part of this, uh, feel free to ask uh, questions on maybe some particular tickers that you're watching and I'll answer those for you at the end after I go over the ones that I'm watching. And just to kind of give you a perspective of how well these stocks have been doing, um, we've talked about QPRC where we got in sub penny and now it's trading an upwards of three cents. So that is a 300% mover. BMMJ, what we talked about that one below a dollar, it has now had highs of $2.40. So as you can see, We've done some. We've had some pretty good success here on Stock Watch Sunday and moving into the week. Now, again, these aren't stocks that I'm telling the, telling you to buy or sell or whatever. Uh, you know, these are just stocks that I'm I'm trying to show you how I find value in these. And uh, it's not necessarily for you to mimic exactly what I do, but if you find value in this and you say, hey, this system works for me, then uh, great. Uh, you know, my whole purpose is to be able to change lives, not only with this channel, but also within uh, our, my WeTrade HQ uh, platform. And so uh, just take this for what you will. And, and if you find my strategies helpful and useful, again, I would appreciate that thumbs up. So I see some more bidding wars going on, or uh, donation wars. Thanks thanks so much, guys. I, I really do appreciate that. It, uh, you guys are amazing. Oh, my God, look at that. You guys, you guys are killing me. Uh, I don't even know what to say right now. Uh, that's awesome. You guys are great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue with uh, the stocks that I'm watching this week. So um, and, uh, and so we'll go to uh, sharing my screen as per the usual. Uh, and so... Uh, the first one I'm going to come across, uh, uh, present to you guys is BMMJ. So again, this is WeTradeHQ.com. Absolutely free to use this site. You can go and search your favorite tickers. You can utilize uh, technical analysis through our integrated trading view charts. You can talk about them amongst your friends, all done in real time. Our Discord server is also integrated into the site. You can check out news. Uh, anything, anybody that's any, tweeting about this stock in, in particular, you can search through. Uh, so not just forums that are directly onto the site. You can go to Discord, you can go to news, anything that anybody's talking about this ticker, you can find here on WeTrade HQ. So I know a lot of people probably don't realize that there is a news, news tab here and we're constantly improving this, constantly um, making sure that this platform runs so much better uh, each and every day. We literally, uh, you know, 
as far as the platform is concerned, we just got Jake. Jake's been doing an excellent job at making sure that, uh, you know, this has been uh, an amazing platform and people have been, uh, you know, utilizing it. And again, it's absolutely free to join. So, um, oh, I see John <laughs> caught a massive northern pike today in Maine. That, I, I am jealous. I, I have never caught a northern pike. I've caught some pickerel, never caught a northern pike. So, John, you have to invite me up, man. I'll, I'll, I'll gladly catch a, a pike with you. So, uh, anyway, BMMJ, uh, we've talked about this at length now for the last couple of weeks, weeks, and it has gone from under a dollar since we first tar- started talking about it in the uh, 80 cent range, all the way up to highs of $2.41. Now, why has this been going? Well, if you guys have been watching my channel, I've, already, I've gone, gone into due diligence at length on this one. What I'm most excited about, so, uh, you know, having said that, Go check out my channel I've, on previous Stock Watch Sundays, even the, my most recent uh, um, regularly scheduled video on uh, weed stocks to watch. BMMJ is also on there as well uh, as Australis, and I go into why I see value in this one. But what I'm, why I'm bringing it to your attention today uh, and why I'm still talking about it uh, is because of the uh, retracement here. So what I'm excited about on BMMJ, I've been talking to you guys. I'm like, you know, I really kind of want to see this settle down a little bit. I'd like to see it come down and reconsolidate and really form some sort of base before it goes to new highs. And that's exactly what it's doing. I'm really excited about BMMJ. And even though it's had a couple of red days now, that's what I'd like to see. If you go to the daily chart, I mean, look at this. Five red days, and they really weren't even red over the last month. In a few days, and then the last two trading days, which is Wednesday, Thursday, finally saw some red. And you might be saying, well, what the heck? Why would you want to see some red days? Well, because I don't want to see it like go nuts and go crazy every single day. And it was starting to get to that point to where it was almost too crazy and too scary for BMMJ. And so I like to really see this uh, come down, come back down to earth a little bit and really kind of settle. If it starts to come back down here around... A uh, dollar seventy. I will definitely be considering adding to my position. Right now, I'm just on free trades or free free trades, free shares. So what I did was my initial buy-in. I have now sold half of that position, and now all the shares that I have in here is 100% pure profit, uh, profit dollars. So anything that I sell, whatever price it is, it will be all profit uh, dollars moving forward. Having said that, I do like the fact that it's starting to come back down and I like the support level right at $1.70. So if it happens to do that, uh, then I will definitely be considering adding to that position. So that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. We've gone over BM, BMMJ quite a bit. So I just wanted to you know, give you guys my uh, thoughts on this and how it's been reacting over the last couple of trading days and what I see in this moving forward. I still see a lot of long-term potential on this one. Definitely one that I'm going to be building a position around uh, if it comes back down to a level that makes sense to add. And again, that $1.70 area looks like it's going to be a good spot for me to consider adding to my position. Uh, (laughs) Is this the quickest $130 I've ever made on this YouTube channel? It has. I mean, I made a lot more than $130 in, uh, uh, in, in 10 minutes, but trading trading wise anyway but uh, as far as youtube channel yeah probably so but so thank you guys so much for donating uh that that means the world to me you have no idea um it really does mean a lot it's one thing to pay for services and stuff like that but you know i i do appreciate uh th- those donations very much uh very much so so thank you so much uh the next one we're going to talk about is uh ptop uh so ptop is peer-to-peer What's going on with this one? Well, we got into this one in my morning mentorship, which if you're interested in checking out my morning mentorship, that is a paid service. So everything that WeTradeHQ provides is for free except for the mentorships. So we have some exclusive mentors within our platform. Uh, I am one of them, and I go live with my morning mentorship folks from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern time via Zoom. So it's a video conference, and you guys can ask me questions live and in person. Uh, and, uh, we go over some potential catalysts before the stock market opens. And then, uh, I stick with you guys 30 minutes after the market opens and we can kind of go over and execute, uh, those plans. And I, I'm sure there's some folks in here that are watching within, uh, this stock watch Sunday can attest to the uh, value that they see within uh, the morning mentorships. And if you're interested in checking that out, the links are in the description below. Uh, so, um, uh, 
with uh, PTOP. What's going on? So in the morning mentorship, we shouted this out at a double zero one two. Got in uh, around double zero one two, double zero one three, and then it skyrocketed all the way up to double zero three four. I am now on free shares on this one as well. And why am I on free shares? Well, uh, my position essentially doubled once they got to double zero two four to double zero two six. It doubled, so that's when I sold half of my position. So now I'm free and clear. The stress is off. I'm not worried about protecting my, um, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not worried, worried about protecting my initial investment anymore because I already did that. So everything that's in here now is free shares. So, you know, what's the plan here? So I think that there's still going to be value. And why did it run in the, in the first place on Thursday? Well, they came out with news that basically they talked about settling. Uh, is this the, I had two PRs pulled up. So let me just double check here. This is April 9th. I'm going to come back to April 9th PR, and that's why I still see longer value in it. But for the time being, what happened on Thursday was that they basically settled $500,000 in debt uh, on the books to C2A. So that is what why it went crazy, because they had a half a million dollars in debt that they have um, taken care of. So what's the other thing here? So I, I had this one pulled up from the 9th. PTOP's business is um, Mobic, Mobic Card. So what is Mobic Card? Well, Mobic Card is basically mobile business cards, which might not seem like a big deal to you, but they did have a patent that is pending on this one, and it looks like uh, they're going to be really kind of getting into business here with these uh, mobile business cards that can be applied to apps that you can send to other you know people that you're networking with and that sort of thing we live in a digital age guys and that is what's going on here so mobile card is going to be what's happening with ptop so i think that the more uh, attention that gets on this one along with being able to settle that debt which is massive amount of debt looking at the share structure here which is always important it's fat it's real fat However, it has moved considerably. You know, with the news that came out, there was really no front loading at all looking at the chart. And that's what we look for. So uh, if there is an, a significant move on a stock, we want to look at the chart to see, okay, has there been some pretty heavy loading? That's how you identify a pump and dump. A lot of people just like to say pump and dumps are something that goes up and comes down really quickly. It's not always the case. If you're looking at something like this, PTOP has had very little that's been preloaded on this. And so what I mean by that is that before this catalyst, there was no, little to no buying at all whatsoever. Sometimes you can easily see on a chart where there's been a lot of buying going on before a catalyst even occurs. So then at the time that that catalyst actually happens, that's when the dumping will occur. That is your definition of a pump and dump. So if I'm looking back here, so this huge green volume candle or this huge green volume bar was on Thursday when that catalyst first came out. So this is a Thursday if I'm looking at the chart here. If I'm looking at Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even before that, and I see some real heavy loading, some real heavy uh, volume going on and not a whole lot of price action, and then uh, we see movement out of that after a catalyst, that's, that's a huge red flag to me. That is what a pump and dump is. People that are preloading on something to dump on you after a catalyst arises, that is a pump and dump. Something that happens like this where it goes absolutely nuts and then maybe it comes back down, not necessarily a pump and dump in my book. You know, I, I'm looking for something that's preloaded so that I can avoid that. But this is what makes me excited about something like PTOP because there's very little front loading going on uh, before that insane catalyst uh, and that really got this thing moving over 300% on Thursday. So uh, that is PTOP. I still see value here given that there could be a longer term play uh, with the, the MOBA card stuff is going on, especially now that they got that debt out of the way. Um, so that's why I, I really enjoy that one. This is why, I mean, obviously it was an amazing run for those of us who got into this within the We Trade HQ fam and within the morning mentorship folks. I know that KSM also got into this one as well, which is the other uh, mentorship folks within uh, We Trade HQ. So um, yeah, a great win for just about everybody on Thursday. That was definitely the stock of the day. So yeah, well, I already talked about that on the patent as well. So uh, it's the MOBA car patent is what I was referring to. Next one's going to be CHMJF. And you, so for those of you who follow me regularly, you're probably like, what the hell? Are you really you know, pulling up another F stock? 
Uh, yeah, I am actually. Uh, so if you don't know what F stocks are, you know, F stock is basically a foreign stock. And so in this case, it's a Canadian stock. This is another um, one of those cases where there's Canadian stocks, uh, you know, make doing business in the U.S. So if you guys don't already know, Canada, um, you know, cannabis is completely legal across the board uh, from a gut, you know, from a government level. And all the way down in the U.S., you guys know that they're they're legal in, the, on, in certain states, but not on the federal level. So what's Canada doing? Well, they're getting into, you know, the, the U.S. markets, you know, basically because they can. And the U.S. kind of has a little bit of a, a, they're, they're, they're pretty limited, a lot more limited than these Canadian stocks. And so CHMJF could be another one we could see make a potential. Now, I'm not saying that, um, you know, this is actually going to happen, but it has the potential, I think, in the same type of setup that BMMJ has. Will it go to two and a half dollars or three dollars from this 53 cent area? I can't guarantee that, but I'm just saying that the potential is certainly there. Why am I saying this? Well, you can see that, you know, obviously that the uh, volume has certainly come up on this one quite considerably over the last couple of days. So if we go to the daily chart, you can see how much this volume has certainly shot up. Going and doing some more due diligence on this one, you can see that the share structure isn't all that that big. They do have some com convertible debt, but so does BMMJ. So don't let that discourage you. Uh, if the dollar volume comes in that can overcome the conversion of debt that's going on, then it shouldn't be a problem. What I like on this one, why it's been moving is because of uh, their partnership with New Jersey Medical Retail Cannabis License Applicant. They've been working with a lot of these other states, um, such as California, Washington, as you can see here, New Jersey. They also, if you go back to um, back in December, and I know that I'm going back a little bit here, they acquired uh, Global Rights to Sugarleaf brand, which is a, a which was a huge uh, acquisition on their part. And then going back here, what I like is that they provided you know, an update basically talking about everything that they've done since then. So December is when, you know, they acquired sugar leaf. They have a master grower, which if anybody knows what that is, um, you know, basically somebody who's really good at growing weed uh, to put it in, in the lamest of terms. And they, it's an award-winning product that they've been putting out. And so now that they've been basically, you know, getting in contact with a lot of these other, um, institutions that have legal you know, that can grow stuff legally within the states uh, i think that the value here at 53 cents could be undervalued you know that's just my valuation of the company obviously you can see that on the daily chart it's moving up quite a bit what i really like well what, what i would really like to see is if this came back down to like 48 so if we go back to the 30 minute chart, I really like it at 48, 49 cents. If I can get an order filled there, I think I'd be really happy with that one uh, moving forward on CHMJF. So again, just one to watch for. Is it going to go berserk? I don't know. It's just one of those ones where I think that it could definitely get, get a move on. One of those ones that's flying under the radar, kind of like BMMJ did until the real money started to hammer that one. So... Yeah, I see some questions here, and I'll definitely get to that one. Uh, chemistry is going to be uh, a big time. Yeah, so that's the name of the company is CHMJF is Chemistry, which I, I thought that was kind of clever. Uh, that's the name of the company. Um, LFAP, we'll get to that one. So who's going to prison for now? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what's going on with LFAP? I'll get definitely get to LFAP. Uh, INKW, we can talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Master Crower. Yeah, so don't let that fool you. Just, uh, I was just... I don't know. I like the joke. Jo of course, your name's Joker, obviously. Um, shows promotional OTC markets. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, promotion. I mean, promotions aren't a bad thing. Uh, so yeah, we'll get to, we'll get to those as well. The next one I want to get to though is QPRC. This is one that was on Stockwatch Sunday over the last couple of uh, weeks, uh, and for good reasons. Uh, let me. What am I doing here? Let me get this out of the way. There we go. So QPRC has been on here for the last couple of weeks because of the patent um, cases that they have had, Apple being one of them, Amazon being another. And why is there value here? Well, because they've already settled with major companies such as Texas Instruments, Asus Tech, a lot of other ones uh, that, that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. This is the business that QPRC does. They purchase 
uh, patents and then go and find uh, other, you know, these major companies that have maybe infringed upon these patents. And so Apple being one of them, as you guys know, Apple, uh, you know, basically they ended litigation on Qualcomm. So, you know, could be a good uh, opportunity for them. Uh, Huawei is another one that they have patent infringement case on. Huge companies we're talking about here uh, that uh, QPRC has already settled cases on already. And uh, there's plenty of other huge companies that are pending. What's the deal here? Well, there could be, you know, um, they actually did come out with uh, a recent PR that they are going to be in, on, in Vegas on May 1st. And if you guys care about this, which I do personally, I like companies that aren't just PR machines and they, they needlessly and senselessly put out press releases. QPRC is not one of those. I like the ones that just, you know, they're putting out their disclosures. Let me go find out what's in their 10K and 10Qs and, and have that be that. I don't like companies that just needlessly put out press releases for the sake of putting out a press release. You know, that's way too pumpy in my book and it's just something that doesn't sit with me very well. I understand the need for certain press releases, but when you put out something that's basically not all that related to your company and it just doesn't make any sense. It's what we call fluff. A fluff PR is something that I don't really care to see, uh, but these are not. Uh, you know, They put out two recent PRs just basically talking about how they're going to be getting a lot of exposure at these conventions. And so, yeah, that, that really isn't something that they need to put in a Q filing, but definitely makes sense to put out in a PR. So I do like that as well. Um, and in their recent 10K, they did talk about um, how they have 48, I think it's around 48 new patents that they acquired. Uh, and again, with them being in the business of, you know, searching for the patents that, that have been infringed upon uh, and then settling those cases with major companies, uh, it could be very exciting times for QPRC. Uh, Alan says he's writing on QP, writing free shares on QPRC. That's because we talked about this sub penny. If anybody was in my morning mentorship group, we talked about QPRC, the value that we saw here. It was way undervalued at 009, 008 area. So we were able to capitalize on that right around the, at this low blue line that I have uh, here for you guys. And now it has gone all the way up to highs of over, th excuse me, over three cents. Settled right back down in around two and a half cent range for the time being. That seems to be where it likes to hang out at is around two and a half cents. And so we'll kind of see, um, you know, where where this goes from here. So 71 new patents. Yeah. So, OK. Uh, oh, 61. 61. OK. So 61 new patents. Yeah. So I, I, it was close. I mean, 48, 61. That's, that's a little bit of a difference. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's still a lot. That's a lot of patents. So what does that mean? It means a lot more revenue uh, potential for uh, QPRC, which then therein you know provides more value to QPRC. So uh, that is my two cents on that one. Why I'm still seeing that one as a good one to watch for next week. The last one, stock number five, is going to be IMUN. So IMUN is one that I see uh, some potential value in. Now this is going to be my dark horse. If you guys have been watching uh, this channel for a while, you know that I have these every now and then. A quote unquote lotto play or a dark horse play is IMUN. Came out with a 10K last week and it seems to be a lot more attention coming on this. Now, why why am I t you know saying that this could be a potential lotto play? This, that, and the other. Well, I'm looking at the security details here and I'm looking at share structure. That's one of the key things that I look at. And so looking like it could, the float's pretty decent, around 300 million is probably what it's uh, around. So I'm good with that. Looking at, at the chart here, we've, we're seeing some unusual volume. We haven't seen this kind of volume in uh, quite a few months. And so when you see that unusual volume, that's kind of what gets, gets me going a little bit. Uh, it's been moving quite thinly. I like the way that it moves on not a whole lot of volume already. And we were able to capitalize on this at 008. I've actually been holding this position for a while and has now been averaging down. I do have an average now of 008. 
and it has now had highs since then, uh, since before, just before that 10K came out, when we talked about this unusual volume that came in last week, it went up to 0124. So it's been moving quite nicely. Doesn't really take a whole lot to go on with this. So sometimes when you see unusual volume, when I'm looking at unusual volume like that, I, I there's sometimes a potential catalyst that comes beyond that. So I don't think the 10K is it. We're seeing volume come in after that 10K. Uh, Thursday was still a nice volume day uh, for IMUN. And sometimes when you see that unusual volume pop up, there'll be a significant catalyst that arises. So that's why you try to get it early. That's why you have those scanners that are set up for that unusual volume. So you can be like, okay, I'm going to take a lotto on this one and see where this goes. Uh, so I'm not ready to say that there's the IMUN is going to blow the face off of everything, uh, but there's definitely some something moving going on there. And that's why uh, it's kind of my dark horse for next week. So going back and looking at the comments here, I know that there's some uh, stocks that people want me wanted me to take a look at. I'll be happy to do that. XHUA, we can definitely look at that one as well. IRNC, I think the play is done on IRNC, uh, but we can certainly take a look at that as well. And uh, just to give you, let's where are we at by the way? Somebody give me a a, a member count. Who? How many? How many uh, folks do we have here in the live stream so far? TPNI, that's not going to be one that I'm going to look at really. There's a lot. There's a huge preload on TPNI. 66. We better have 66 thumbs ups. That's all I'm saying. At least, right? Get the thumbs up going, guys. All right. So uh, questions on LFAP. So LFAP, if you guys don't know what LFAP, what they do, we've done a lot of due diligence, due diligence on this one in the past. So uh, feel free to re review that, but they are a LGBTQ ETF. And given uh, that fact, there's a lot of value to be had with uh, LFAP, and that's why people are buying the heck out of this one. It has since, though, broken uh, one of my comfortable support levels, uh, which was around 13, 14 and a half and 13 and a half cents, respectively. So if you go back out here, We've been talking about how it's been holding so strong at 14 and a half cents. Well, it's kind of broken that, and I'm not quite sure why. I can't really give you a good explanation. I have yet to have added here because I'm not yet seeing a, a bottom support. So what's going on with it? I think, honestly, there's just been a lot of low volume, and I think people are just getting bored. That's all I think this is. You see this quite often. When uh, people, you know, get into and they start anticipating things that are going to be happening and then for whatever reason they don't, they're ready to move on. They don't want to be holding on forever, but that's what lends you opportunities. If you're building this uh, position around your one, if this is one of your core positions in your account, you could use this opportunity to build onto this position. Uh, this is what I plan on doing, but I'm not quite sure that this is going to be the area that I do it just yet. It looks like it's trying to form a solid base around 12 cents, but I'm not convinced that we're quite there yet just because of the small amount of volume that's going on. There's really no volume going on here. And so what I'm saying, what I'm thinking it's go that's happening is that because there's no volume, people are just getting bored and they're just whacking out of it. So they literally just sell out of it, which drives the price down even on low volume. So I'm just chilling right now until we see something, uh, some stronger communication come from LFAP. But the the uh, board of directors that are at play here, all the due diligence that we've gone over on this stock in particular, I'm still very excited about. And that if you choose to continue building a position here, I think you'll be uh, just fine. For me personally, I already do have a, a pretty large position on this one. Uh, so, but uh, I'm waiting to see where this might end up as far as a bottom support level before I'll consider adding to it. So that's my two cents on LFAP. Um, yeah, get more watching that. Do that too. Get your mama on there. Get your brother, sister, everybody be watching it. <laughs> um, okay. INKW. So here's my two cents on INKW. We saw... Uh, some conversions of shares in the form of T-Trades uh, two days in a row, and then it stopped. We saw this when it came out with some kind of bs -y kind of news, if you ask me. Uh, that, was it last week, the week before? And then this huge red day, uh, followed by another red day, was when those uh, shares were converting. One of the most high, one of the highest volume days we'd seen 
really ever uh, on INKW since we've been talking about it. And it was all red. There was a lot of dumping going on. I don't know why. That was kind of a surprise to me. I don't know if they had something that they need an outstanding note that they needed to take care of, but they are under a promotion now. Even it, even with the T trades that went on, it wasn't that much. It was a grand total of I think 16 million shares, somewhere around there, 13 to 16 million shares, if memory serves me right. And uh, you know, looking at security details, that's really not that much. Uh, you're looking at this. This is a small float still. I still see a lot of value in this one. Still hanging in there. Still adding. Uh, I was waiting to see when the bottom was going to drop on this one as far as uh, opportunity to add. I've already added at the 01 area. So, you know, my average is looking pretty sweet. I'm still very happy with this one. Why haven't I sold? Well, because I, like I've been telling you guys, I'm waiting to see who they're distributing to. They didn't purchase the 60,000 square foot bottling facility for nothing. I'm waiting to see who they're, who they're planning to distribute to. You know, who are those big players? And that's that's where where I really kind of think that INKW will, will begin to take off is when that happens. And so I think we're very close to that. And uh, moving forward, that, I'm not really going to pay attention to INKW until that day comes. Uh, I'm going to look at the chart. I'm going to look for area, potential areas to add to my position to build a good, uh, good sizable position around. Not saying that I haven't already, but, you know, if it's going to give me a couple of gifts here and there, I'll take advantage of those and we'll just see where that goes uh, from there. All right. So KALY, KALY is another one of those, uh, you know, stocks where they're just a PR machine. KLY, PRA, what's the other one? Uh, MRNJ, no, not MRNJ, another, another MJ stock. They're all, they're all, you know, the, the same. Very pumpy, something that US, yeah, USMJ, uh, PURA, KLY, they're all very pumpy type stocks. Something that I'm not really all that keen on. So what I'm ta what I'm talking about here. So let's just give you an example. KLY. First of all, caveat emptor. Okay, not that that would be a hard no on that, just because there is a caveat emptor, but that's something to note. Dark defunct. They haven't had a filing forever. Look, here's the last time they actually had a filing. 2013, they had notification of late filing. So like Lottie, like, but, but they'll, they'll be late on their filings. Okay. Late on their filings, but they put PRs out like crazy. They have a lot of debt to convert and that's why they do it. So the money that's coming in on KLY, the um, USMJ, PURA is not, being overcome by the, the amount of conversion of shares that's going on. So this is one that I'm going to stay away from for the time being. Uh, you, I played this one at triple zeros. I should have held on to it at least a little while longer because it did go up to what, four cents close to that from triple zero. So that was an amazing monster run. But since then they've been converting shares like crazy. So it's not something that I, I'm too keen on that I really like because of that reason. They have a lot of shares to convert and it's real fat. So it's not something that I'm really kind of uh, keen on as far as that's concerned. So um, let's see here. Uh, can we just IPO already? That would be great if we could do that. That would be awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you guys could give me, instead of just like throwing a ticker out there, give me sign, give me, um, so, something else to go off of. So like, if you're going to give me a ticker, that's fine. But if you got like something to like add to that, you know, um, that way I can at least be a little bit more efficient with, um, you know, like, why is it moving? Why do you see value? Something like that. Um, any new thoughts on VYST? I'll take a look at VYST just because I do know quite a bit about it already. So that's what I'm talking about, guys. If it's something that I've either either gone over already that maybe we just hasn't, haven't visited in a while or, or whatever, give me something to go off of just so that I can be a little bit more efficient when it comes to doing some due diligence. Give me a direction to go in. That way I can at least, um, you know, not look, you know, look at this and with some dead, dead air time. Uh, nobody likes that. So VYST... Very good question on that. They had um, 10K. Did the 10K come out yet? I know that they were late on their 10K. Let's see. Um, 
I was I was getting this one and the other one mixed up. Uh, LFAP. They both were supposed to come out with 10Ks last week. And I know one of them did and one of them didn't. So, yeah. Um, BYST is a little late on their 10K. This NT 10K is a notice of late filing. That's what the NT means. So, if you see any kind of NT before a 10K, then that means that they they submitted a late filing. They have 15 days to get uh, their filing in order. Uh, otherwise, they could be marked as delinquent. So, as you can see, VYST still is delinquent. And now they are SEC uh, delinquent as well. So is there much to worry about here? I don't think so. I think they're just maybe they have some uh, things to worry about as far as their uh, accountants. I, I anticipate 10K probably this week. Uh, it's not uncommon to see late filings, um, especially down here. And it is what it is. You know, um, if you're used to trading bigger board stocks and you're quite concerned, it's not something that I would necessarily concern yourself with just yet because um, it's pretty common to see that down here in the OTC. Looking at the, the chart though, I, we've been, we've been in this one since four and a half cent range. It's gone up and had highs of almost 10 cents. So it's just kind of chilling. Uh, we're just waiting on that 10 K and we're waiting after that 10 K and after they get their filings in order, I think that we'll start to see some more positive PRs, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put out positive PRs or positive catalysts until they get their filings in order because then they're at risk for caveat emptors and that sort of thing. So VYST is just another one of those ones where it, you, there's long-term potential. You're going to build your account your um, account around something like this one because of the legitimacy of their business. And uh, yeah, you know, take that for what you will. Either way, with our entries at four and a half cents, still sitting pretty at 072. Just one of those ones where you're just going to have to sit and wait. This is going to be a patience play by far. Um, but yeah, just going to be a waiting game here on that filing. So, um, let's see here. Um, SRUTF, uh, yes, lots of, uh, good, um, potential on SRUTF. It's just kind of been status quo on that one. Hasn't moved a whole lot. So we're just waiting on, uh, catalyst as far as that one is concerned as well. Um, Ex-Republican John Boehner is pushing uh, this stock. Any ideas? What is this one? C-U-R-A. Let's take a look at that. That that intrigues me. Thank you. See, at least that gives me something. At least it gives me something to go off of. I don't have C-U-R-A. Hold on. Nothing on C-U-R-A. Is that an actual ticker? Or is that a typo? Or maybe it's C-N-X? Nope. I don't know. Uh, is it this one? I don't know. I don't, I don't see that ticker anywhere. Uh, you have my attention at John Boehner, but I don't, I don't know. Cura, it's Canadian. Okay. C-U-R-A. So maybe it's just something that I, I, that's not pulling up on the U S markets. That's probably why. Maybe it's an F. Is it C U R A F? I don't know. NLST waiting on a court settlement. Is this so? Let's take a look at NLST netlist. Uh, what's going on here? What, what was the, there's, you said they're waiting on a settlement. Lots of times, uh, the chart doesn't look half bad. Now this is a NASDAQ one, I believe. Uh, but looking at the chart here, it looks like it really likes to bounce off of 40 cents a lot. 40 cent area. Yeah. Like 39. Look at how many times it's bounced off of that area. So if you're looking to day trade this, uh, I would, I would really, I'd be chomping at the bit here at 39. Cause it just seems to bounce right off of that. And even further down here at this area, right at 29. So at like 40 cents. And then if it breaks at 40 cent support, uh, then back down at 29, it just likes to bounce right off of that. So if you're looking to day trade, it certainly can make a case for that. Or maybe even like a, uh, you know, a, a decent swing trade, uh, for sure. Uh, off of those levels 
Absolutely. So I don't know if I would be holding on to this one to wait around for a settlement just because they do take so freaking long. But looking at the chart, that looks sweet. I like that a lot. Uh, AERG. So they're starting to run together a little bit, guys. Just help me out here. Um, yeah, Jesse, I did cover uh, CH... MJF earlier. So if you were a little late on this one, I did cover that one. That was the third stock uh, that I'm watching this week. So thank you for uh, providing that info. Uh, I pretty much covered everything that you said there. Um, let me see. So AERG, where did it go? AERG. I'll just pull it up. All right, so let's take a look at, holy cow. Um, wow, so looking at the chart here, it's obviously been on quite a rip here. It may be one of those situations where it could be too late. Let's see, looking at a 30 minute chart, it's kind of settled down a little bit on the 30, but you're going back to the daily chart and it's like, whoa, uh, pretty crazy move here. So let's see. I mean, it's going to be really risky to play it at this point. Did they come out with some sort of uh, catalyst? They had to have, right? They kind of come out with some significant PR. Nothing PR-wise. Did they come out with a disclosure recently? Yeah, on the 9th uh, annual report. Something was probably going on in the annual report. They got people going. Um, but there had there. I don't see anything in particular that really looks like you know, makes me want to get in it. It looks a little bit too hot at this point, if I'm honest. Uh, this is an insane run up over the last, I would say, three trading days. Insane run up. So it's a little too hot, if I'm if I'm honest. So like, if you're gonna ask me, would I get into this one? For me personally, I probably would stay away, um, just because it would just be a missed opportunity at this point. Um, so that's that would be my two cents. Just looking at the chart, it's gonna be a little bit risky for me. Um, so let's see here. So is it, okay. C-U-R-L-F was the Boehner play, right? C-U-R-L-F. So revit, ah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Cure relief. So this is another weed one. I'm guessing another weed stock. Uh, wow. Some pretty good volume in here. I had a gap up. That must've been when Boehner was, was starting to push it. What day was this? This had a gap up on March 21st and then another gap up on March 22nd. It's had a couple of gap ups since it's uh, gapped up on uh, April 17th, which was Wednesday, last Wednesday. Another gap up on the 18th. Boy, this thing really likes to get, get going, doesn't it? Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on. Acquisition of Eureka, that was 4-1. Nonsense quarterly index, performance and rebalancing. I don't see anything about John Boehner in here, though. I mean, they're pretty current. I mean, obviously, they are DCQX. But looking here, let's take a look. I don't know. I, let me see. I don't see anything about Boehner in here at all. So yeah, that's a good that's a good question. I think it is too high, just because. So Sean Sean asked, "Ain't it too high?" I would say it's too high. I mean, look at all the gap ups it's had already. This could be another one where it's just another missed opportunity. If you didn't get in at these lower levels at like I would say six dollars or so, I think it would be too high to get in at eleven. I mean, we're really pushing it here. It's some pretty insane volume really over the last month. I don't know. that. I think that would just be too high for me to get in personally. I mean, for me to get in, I'd have to ask myself, okay, do I see this going to $20 short term? And the answer would probably be no. I just don't see how it's going to go to $20 from here. Um, it may, and I may be wrong, but I just don't see that. 
Uh, so if I'm looking at something, I'm looking something to at least double my money or, or more. Um, that that's, that's the potential that I look for at least at the very least CAVR, um, very seriously pumped. Not exactly one that I'm going to be looking at telling anybody to get in. Um, so let's see here. CAVR, definitely one that I would pretend that I would stay away from. Uh, people have been saying that CAVR is going to be going crazy for months and months and it hasn't. Um, and just look at the type of people that are playing in it and, you know, that'll give you some answers as to whether or not you should get in it. Uh, BNIGF, if you heard anything on this one, they've been spamming OTC markets with filings, no chart info. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard that one at all, but usually when they start slapping it with filings and stuff, I don't know if it would be one that I would probably get into only because of that reason, you know, maybe they're trying to get current. What is the, what is the ticker again? Uh, B N I G F Andrew B N I G F. Yeah. Uh, gosh, man, I think the first, first thing that I'm going to tell you, I'm going to stay away because of the lack of liquidity here. If this is the real spread, that's going to be a hell no for me. Let's see here. I, I got a lot of weed stocks people are asking me about. I can't go over all of them. Um, <laughs> Joker. How are there all these 2 million square foot weed factories and I haven't ran into a single one? That's hilarious. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, all right. You know what? So I'm, there's there's a lot of F stocks that are out there. I can't I can't go over all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and, and actually end it there, if you guys don't mind. So I went over a lot of stuff. We're approaching an hour now uh, with uh, Stockwatch Sunday. So that's usually why, where I try to keep it around. So if you guys do have any other questions, feel free to ask me uh, within our WeTrade HQ community. Uh, again, uh, check out our Discord group. Uh, lots of people that are active in there. And so feel free to reach out to me if I didn't get to your stock today. I do apologize, but I try to keep it within that certain time frame. And then so just make sure that you're reaching out to me if you really want to know my thoughts on it. So that being said, um, I want to encourage you guys to check out our, our platform over at WeTrade HQ. If you want to buy one of our shirts, this is a, a buy, buy the F and Dip shirt little Atari stuff. We got lots, lots of cool, clever things like that as well. The links are all in the description below. And give this a thumbs up. I don't know how many people are still watching, but uh, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I do go live every day that the market is open during my midday market recap where we go over the plays that we made for that day, how we will be able to come successful, and maybe even learn some potential mistakes as well along the way. And I also do like a couple of outlier type videos, just to kind of go over like fundamentals of trading, how to become a better trader, that kind of stuff, as well as my entrepreneur uh, uh, topics as well that I, that I put out on Saturdays too. So if you're interested in any of that, uh, please subscribe and also check out my morning mentorship uh, group as well. Uh, we are growing like wildfire lately. It's been pretty awesome. Uh, so check that out as well. And uh, links are all in the description below. Anything that you want to know about, all those links are there, so please go check those out. And that is it for me, guys. So as always, I will see you all before the bell. And B. Smith is out. Have a good one, guys.